approximately three million U.S. dollars were invested and slash spent, depending on your perspective, to keep me from speaking with you today and to keep me from uh, sharing the, the the wisdom that I've I've learned uh, from my experiences, and that's because when I was a kid, my very sick parents manipulated and uh, a psychiatric provider to diagnose me with schizophrenia when I never had the symptoms. And so thus I spent 28 years on these drugs that uh, prevented me from being a person and all the horrible things that could happen to a person you can imagine after 80,000 pills being swallowed. So always the, uh, the rebel, always the, always the dreamer, the believer, the creator, the knower, somebody who I always, I always knew I was something different than others. And, but I never understood that the reason why I was not uh, okay was because I was drugged to the, to the gills. And so I now know that 3 million US dollars were spent to keep me from being happy, healthy, and well, and that my parents were very sick and they had a lot of money and they used it. They used it because they were sick and when their beautiful little son knew that something was wrong and began talking about what was happening at home, that was the end of that little boy's life. Now, a little boy didn't have a chance to, to, to become a, a, an adult uh, until beginning in 2015. So my story is called The Beginning, The Beautiful Life of a Murder Survivor. Because in 2015, I proved without any question that I was a child victim of this severe uh, pharmaceutical abuse. And you can imagine that a lot of people have their hand in something like that. And that was not very good for me, simply uh, because I was the evidence of health. And you're not supposed to get better when you stop taking their pills mm -hmm. after 28 years of telling people you have schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and this whole long laundry list of insanities when in fact you were made sick by the drugs they gave you. That is a no-no to the status quo, no matter where you stand in Western uh, contemporary society, which preaches mental health awareness, get your needs met, ask for help. I did it all. And I ended up homeless as a result of choosing to be healthy and well. And that's how I got here today, seven years ago. Seven years ago, the whole entire world opened up to me and it crashed down immediately because I was not supposed to get better. So my story, the beginning, the beautiful life of a murder survivor sounds like a contradiction, but that's why I say what I say. That's why I don't know what I know and why I do know what I do know. That's why I need to be connecting with people who see the value that I bring to the world because Nothing is guaranteed, and yesterday is over. Tomorrow was completely unwritten, and I could. It could be an earthquake right now, and I could. This could be my last moment, and I'm only able to know that. But I really want to think about a better tomorrow. But if I don't have connections and people who have the capacity, and the 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 desire, and 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 the belief that good things are possible when good people work together, then that ain't going to happen for me. And I understand that's my reality. So I'm not just a person who believes in the power of attraction, the power of, of love, the power of spirit, the power of connection. Uh, I'm a person who also knows that everything could collapse right here in this moment. And that would be okay as well, because without others like me who have the, the, the means uh, to, to, to respect and honor what I bring to the table. You know, like I said, tomorrow is unwritten, but tomorrow could be a much better story, much like the title, which I've written intentionally, The Beginning. And it's called The Beginning for a reason because I had this crazy idea all these years ago that I was going to write a memoir. And the last chapter was just going to be titled The Beginning. In uh, the words, the only words, of that last chapter are the same as the t title of the chapter, the beginning, because I don't know anything else. So I'm not screwing around.
when I say I'm a murder survivor. I am. And it's weird. It's weird. Do I feel like an angel or an alien or something that I can't explain? That's my story. And I just have to keep going and hope. Well, not hope. I don't like saying hope. Just believe. Just believe. That's it. My eyes keep opening, then I just have to keep going. That's the truth. I'm a nice person, but I'm I'm hurt. I'm not gonna like deceive anybody. Just be honest about that. Hope that's okay. I feel like I don't want to be negative. This is just my no, reality. And it's, you know what? Like, you know, like it's okay. It's oh, it's okay. Like it's absolutely okay to be hurt. There's so much, and I, I a lot of what you're saying about mental illness lands for me because my mum had bipolar and was medicated her whole life and I actually don't believe there's anything wrong with her I just believe she's human and I believe that she's gifted and I believe that the experiences that she's had in her mind with that connection were just too overwhelming to cope with and that they medicated her and dumbed her down and now she's li a living side effect of all those pills that she's the the healthcare system is here not to fix us it is here to keep us broken and you sharing those words are powerful because I think certainly what's happened in the last couple of years has woken many more people up to how something we have believed to be security and in our best interests potentially isn't but it's going to yeah. be a long road to have that broad awakening and to see change because like you said there's it's not an industry that can be infiltrated very easily. And in that respect, money is power. I don't believe again, like with anything, it's like how you focus on something is how it, it creates itself. And so I believe that if we can all keep increasing our consciousness and come through that love and compassion that is so, you know, fundamental in your heart, that many things can change. Many things can evolve. Many things can um shift and it's not going to come without stories like yours which are heartbreaking but you are the change thank you uh, a few comments if i may i'm yeah. sorry about your mom those aren't side effects those are the effects mm, forgive okay. me it's just mm. the truth there's no such thing as side effects in psychiatric medication. Yeah. 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 They know that. <laughs> That's why I live in Mexico now. Because if I have a problem, I could just go to my house and sit right here. And no one's going to get me. Yeah. You're in a place of, is... like, deep. Like, if you think into, you know, that shamanic culture and the healing power of nature and you know, even just to sit at your house is a healing power to, we're not used to that silence and that space that has been taken away from us and disconnects us from our own healing abilities, you know, like. I'm in a place that I'm not going to disclose the name of because it's my safe place, but this is a shamanic town going back centuries. There are pyramids just above my head, at the top of the mountains and, at the top of the mountains are ancient fossils from millions of years ago of fish creatures, uh, fish creatures, sea creatures, and uh, it's a town of rebellion, uh, a town of spirit. It's, um, I live in a, a, a valley that was made up of, of a collapsed a series of super volcanoes. So I'm surrounded almost all, I mean, I'm looking right now, I'm almost surrounded everywhere by huge mountains, um, big mountain, not huge, but big enough. It takes three hours to get to the top. Um, so there's quartz everywhere, volcanic rock, copper. We drink the water uh, from the aquifer. It still exists underneath the volcano and from the mountains as well. And it's a very unique, special place. It's, it's, it's vibrational, it's energetic, it's magical. Um, and I'm here surrounded by many people from around the world who are also um survivors and healers and excuse me and 
I've been meeting people over the years here who have similar stories as mine. And I don't know how they were okay, but they embraced me. People who escaped horrible things. Mm. Yeah. People who, who have been abducted and horrific things and escapees and people who are escaping Western oppression. And that's a thing. That's the thing. They don't know that. A lot of people don't want to believe that. Mm. The past few years in the United States and around the world, it's become much more obvious that Western oppression is a thing. It's not just happening uh, like uh, east of Ukraine. We're not just like white people are sometimes really bad. Not just like we're not so great. We're not number one. Like we screwed a lot of things up for a lot of people. We hurt ourselves. You know, our culture, our our lack of culture, our, our ignorance, our our privilege, our belief that we're, we're something different. We're not. We're actually like terrible. And coming here and realizing that's so true and realizing that I escaped like uh, like like being choked are the very things that the rest of the world has now thanks to thanks to thanks to the pandemic, thanks to horrific wars, thanks to like a, a, a very sick person being the leader of the united states you know unleashing the 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 the, the masses of the, the sickness that we learned is acceptable i escaped that because i know and i already knew that that was sick that's why i'm here that's why i'm surrounded by people who love me even if they can't speak with them properly who identify as or are viewed as shamanic people and they embrace me as one of their own embrace me as one of their own i'm treated exceptionally well by the by the shamanic people who have migrated here and i'm also embraced by the local people who are the indigenous crew going back 500 years i have been embraced by those people the most thank the heavens for that because without them i wouldn't be here today but that is the truth isn't it that is the truth of spirit is to have no judgment like that it's why you know to go into these cultures these these this ancient like the the we say it's ancient we say it's it's actually within us it's within all of us but we don't necessarily have the connection to it and I know I count myself there like when it took something awful to happen in my own life you know it took so it took getting to that place of um yeah not really knowing how you go forward to stopping looking out here and starting to look within here and really understand you know the the feeling that just like you you said you said a few things that really resonated you know there's there's things within me that felt beyond me that I just have pushed away not connected with couldn't verbalize them felt like they didn't fit and then when I didn't have any other choice but to go in here I, I, I got it all out and I laid it all out and I said you know what this is pretty cool this is pretty cool and this is actually somebody who I feel way more comfortable living within you know and living through and and through that like this opening up to I can only describe it as like it's just connection and wisdom and and that place beyond thoughts thoughts for me kept me safe my whole life they did thinking my way into everything understanding everything making everything logical because of my own upbringing having a you know having a mum with in inverted commas mental health the volatility whatever mm -hmm. thinking kept me safe now I know that beyond those thoughts magic there's magic beyond those thoughts. There are magic beyond those thoughts. I'm not afraid of anything, which yeah. scares people. The reason why I'm not afraid of anything is because I know the magic beyond those thoughts. That's why. Which is why I think that everybody has to read your chapter. Do you think, do you think a, a chapter can change somebody's life? I'm going to answer your question in my uh, traditional way, which is to answer a, a short, uh, to give a short answer in a paragraph form, because that's all I know how to do. Um, the reason why I'm able to be in this book is because I begged everyone I knew to buy my books that I've already published and to donate to me so I could pay the money so I could be a participant. And so um, without those people, I wouldn't be talking with you today. And so 
can a chapter did you say save someone's life can a chapter change someone's life I, i'm i'm keen to know like the power of a chapter like somebody might hear this and go oh. like i honestly i i my life has been profoundly changed in a sentence that somebody has said before or a you know, and I, I, I just feel that there is so much wisdom in you and what you're going to share through this book that I'm, I'm, I'm wanting you to back you and tell me, will your chapter change somebody's life? Because we're always changing perception. When we change perception, we, we change our reality. So that, that the initial uh, story that I wrote, I wrote after waking up at four o'clock in the morning in my bedroom right there. There's the mountains right there. So I'm in a very special place. I could not sleep. I had anxiety because something very painful had happened in my life. And I had been kind of cope with it for a while. My heart was in a devastated place because of love and love for someone else and realizing that the impossibility of um, connection for reasons that are not in my control, which is torturous. And thus, I perhaps lived a life of disassociation all of, what month is it now? August, so that was June. So all of June, as I had to collect the money to participate, and I had to basically go on autopilot to sell, sell, sell my books and beg and beg, and I got the money, and thanks to everyone who helped make that happen and supported that. So I wrote my story initially, and it was a, a stream of consciousness disaster where my story that's being published in our book um, is from that, but all that was cut out was horrendous and it was horrific. And the rest was really good. <laughs> and I wrote it when I was like in my bed in pain, wishing I was not laying there by myself. Or perhaps I now know that it's better that I am laying there by myself now. I express that to you. Um, painful. So yeah. That, if that book already changed my life, if, if my, my story changed my life because it was an active, active story, it was an active decision that I made to, ch to try to heal from some things. And I, I would say I forced it out of myself. It took me days and weeks to, to make myself write it. And I didn't even write it. I dictated it in voice to text. And that's the truth. And so it already changed my life. And that's enough. And will it change anyone else's life? Will it have an impact on anyone else's life? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to err on the side of caution and say, absolutely. Of course it will. Because everyone out there in the world is, is struggling with something that they can't tell other people, even the most um, competent and successful and beautiful people in the world in, in whatever realm they exist in. We're all suffering for something, and sometimes we just don't know how to cope with it and doesn't bother us, and sometimes we end up not here anymore. So my 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 desire is that the people who read my story will 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 recognize that they have something within themselves that maybe they did not know that they had, and that's that all the power that exists in the entire universe is 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 theirs. And if they just choose to to do something with that, then whatever they want, it's going to happen. It might not be exactly as they planned or or believed, but we whole heck of a lot better than whatever struggling and suffering they're experiencing because they're not dealing with that that piece of them that is, is in pain. So yeah, well, that's, that's my helpful. traditional answer. Thank you for letting me share that with you. I love that. I mean, every single experience that any person has is a blueprint to help others. It's just it's what consciousness do you come from with it? You know, like I was, I, I was involved with, with, a, with a beautiful human being uh, in different ways. And uh, she helped me learn that I was uh, on the autism spectrum, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, but she was way more than me. And so I learned about how I give my traditional answer, but also I have to just give the short answer. And so the short answer is yes. I don't think they're going to ever watch this video, but who knows, right? It's like, I learned that lesson. So I'm trying to learn it. <laughs> You're amazing. I, I appreciate this conversation so much. You've made an impact on me and I'm really, um, I would love to, I'd love for you to share how people can connect with you if they would like to connect with you. That's, that's great. Um, 
I, I was, I, I, yeah, I, I will, I will give you my information. Um, I, I live in a state of shock whenever anyone says this sort of stuff to me, and it's been pretty much a constant. Uh, I don't want to call it a bombardment because it usually has a negative connotation, but it's been pretty constant with people saying things like you just said to me. And I'm always like, don't they know I'm crazy? Like, don't they know that this is like, don't they know? And then I try to remember, maybe I was just taught that all those years. Maybe I was just taught that it was something so wrong with me that I didn't even recognize that things were right with me. And I'm in this like this personal conflict with myself trying to realize that maybe other people see me differently. And it's just really strange. I'm really a crazy person. I'm just a good crazy. I, I would I would reframe crazy because like yeah I, I'm with you in that many people told me that there was something wrong with me boat and you have to change that programming I do want to tell you the reason why I'm in this book with you all I hope that wasn't I want to hear it yeah go yeah so I have the reason why I have no idea and it's not it's not that I'm trying to be rude to you it's like I think I, I have the same sort of reaction that I was speaking with Tracy and uh, I, with many people, was like, I don't have any idea how to be a human being. That's really, that's really the the main point. Because my life did collapse, but it collapsed from nothing. So when my life collapsed, it already was nothing. <laughs> and uh, I'm 48 years old, and I arrived here in Mango three years ago as a homeless person after a year of being homeless in Europe and you were talking about making like how we, how we create abundance and how we, how we can like, you talked about money. I've always been kind of shamed about money because money was how they got me when I was a kid. You know, I was manipulated by some very sick people called my parents and money was how they got me. So like the concept of money and like the concept of like working with people who are talking about like abundance and wealth. And then I started thinking in my head, this is driving me crazy because like uh, people come to me and they, they, they connect with me and say, you should be like making this money and you should be this success. And like, like you have all the parts. I'm like, don't people understand like what I look like on the outside and how I can communicate and express myself with eloquence and how I understand like the different depths and realms and realities of spiritual healing and like the magic and the intense, beautiful pain all the things that are conjured up from the absolute destruction of a human life, of a soul, of a spirit. Like, that is what I know. But what I don't know and what I seem to struggle with immensely is taking all this gorgeous wisdom and translating it into me not having a struggle in my day-to-day -day life so I can be in the place that so many of my contemporaries and peers are in so I can do the work that benefits others and the many hundreds and thousands and millions of people out there in the world who are like me and are magical and are angels and are aliens and, and have already had their, their realities stricken, destroyed, scorched, and left like a skeleton on the side of the road that somehow became its own fertilizer and then created something out of nothing that you fight every single step of the way to be able to just barely function. And that is uh, where I'm coming from. And that is my, my, my desire to bring what I know to the people of the world who will most benefit from that. So I am part of this project with you all, I think, because I know that stuff. And I can bring so much to that reality, to the, to the lives of millions of people, but I'm missing. And I'm not going to, BS anybody. I know what I'm missing. I know the butt's broken and I'm so invested in trying to make it better. And that's why I have to be exactly how I am without any filter and direct to the point that that is what I know. And I know things differently, but I want to be connected with others who can help me bring this beauty because if I don't successfully get it all out of me, it just becomes toxic. And that's why I'm trying to like do what I'm doing and like bring that to the world. You are you, you are all of you and just keep shining that light, buddy, because it's working for me. Thank you. I like the word crazy. For me, it's empowering. Uh, so anyone who doesn't like that, I'm sorry that that's the way it is, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I love myself for all the effed up things that make me me and I'm going to celebrate that. Like this rose, because I have 70 roses in blossom here. This one is called uh, 
Rosa de Castilla, and it smells delicious, even though it's wilting now. I've been walking around with it all day. I'm going to smell it. And then I'm going to say, for anyone out there who wants to connect with me, um, please do. I want to hear from you. Um, you can reach me at my website, sanity is a full time job dot org. And, or if you write sanity of the full time job dot org slash collections, you'll find all the things I have. If you just scroll through all that, you'll find all the stuff that I've created out of the, I guess we'll call it the ashes of uh, the burnt down life that I'm glad was destroyed. And I hope everyone out there's lives will be destroyed as well. So you, you can then get to this point because this is so much better than uh, the way it was. And, I can say that with authority. And so, um, yeah, that's what I created. I created something out of the ashes. You can find all my stuff there. And um, I can show you, this is my newest book. Uh, it's called La Vida Inicia in Mexico. The Life Begins in Mexico. I wrote my poetry book. Someone challenged me to write a poetry book. And so I did. And then I flew to another city and I, I gave a tour of poetry. And then I was a speaker at a, I swear to God, at a poetry festival in Jalisco. And so I wrote that book for that reason. And then this is my other new book. It's called The Craig Lewis Guide to Surviving the Impossible. But I don't like the name Craig Lewis because it's my English name. And uh, people can't say my name here in Mexico. So <laughs> now I'm Gregorio, but I can't say it like they say it. So I, I just say Gregorio with my terrible accent. But yeah, and it says, uh, this, uh, I'm going to call The Gregorio Lewis Guide to Surviving the Impossible is written by a human being who learned the hard way the difference between being alive and truly living. This book is intended to help you figure out whatever it is that you need to, I'm such an asshole, whatever it is you need to figure out. If, if you do the personal work that you need to do, whatever that work may be, you will experience improvements. The bottom line is this, you, the person reading these words, you have the power within to heal and become whoever you were born to be. That is the path that this author has chosen. May your journey result in healing, bug on me, uh, may your journey result in healing and peace and love. And I broke every rule possible in publishing this book. The back cover photo is a selfie. I swear to God, the name is a mouthful and it's just purely me. That's what it is. Love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching this interview. Um, you can find me as always on Instagram at CW underscore full underscore circle. Claire Williamson on YouTube and I'm going to keep having these conversations because together we're going to change this world just by being the change. Thank you. I don't really know how to be a human being or to understand other people, really. Some people I do, but most I don't. Maybe it's the other way around and that's the situation I face, but nevertheless, I have no choice unless I change my mind, which I reserve the right to do so, uh, to continue to um, try my best to get through the moments that are unpleasant, and there are many, and to keep moving forward in hopes, or no, I don't like hopes, in belief that all will work out the way that it was intended. Whatever that means to anybody is what it means to them. 